In this video we're going to talk about conditions and if statements. Python supports logical conditions for mathematics and we've talked about that in some of our previous videos but we're going to incorporate if statements and loops into this so that we can test things and get outputs for the user. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a couple of variables. So we'll say x is 5, y is 10. And we want to go back and revisit. Here we're assigning 5 to x, 1 equals. But Python allows us to test this by saying x equals equals 5. So this statement here is asking does x actually equal 5? If it does, it will return true. If it doesn't, it will return false. So the way we're going to test that is we'll set w to equal this and we'll print W and we see that it prints out true because X is equal to 5. When we change that to 10 it will return false. With this we can add instead of two equal signs an explanation point and this is asking does x not equal 10 so if x does not equal 10 it will return true we can also use our greater than or less than so for instance x is x less than y is x greater than y. We can also add an equals behind these less than or greater than so we can say greater than or equal to y. That will return false. If y was 5, so x and y are the same, it will return true. So x is greater than or equal to y. So now let's put that into an if statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if x, and let's go ahead and change y back to 10. So if x is less than y, and then we get to add a colon and now it's going to do whatever is under here and keep in mind that Python uses these indentions here so the if statement everything underneath it that's indented the same will be included in the if statement so we're gonna cut this out if x is less than y which it is then we're going to print true. And we'll switch this around. And what we'll see is now if y is less than x, which is not, it will not print out anything. It'll actually skip over this. Now again, if we take this indention out and run that, notice that we get an error because we don't have this indention. We've got to have an indention after the if statement. So now we're going to add else into the mix. Um, Python allows us to do an L if very similar if you're used to other languages else if and the way we do that is we take the indention out 
an L if x is less than y with a colon, then we'll print false. So now, if y is less than x, it's going to print true. If that's not the case, then it will come into this statement and test this. If x is less than y, then print false. And so x is less than y, so it printed false. It ignored this line. It printed this line because this elif statement is true. So we, before we go any further, I'm going to add some different text here. We're going to say y is less than x. x is less than y. And we're going to change y to 5. So now, x and y are the same. We're testing at this first line. If y is less than x, it'll print this. If x is less than y, it'll print this. Neither one of them are the same. Neither one of them are true. So when we run this, nothing happens. So we're going to come down and add one more statement. And this is the else statement. So else print they are equal. So again, if this is true, this will print. If it's not, it'll skip. If this is true, this will print. If not, it'll skip. And no matter what else happens, if neither one of these is true, then the else statement will happen. If one of these is true, it will not print out the else statement. So let's test that. So they are equal because this was not true and then this was not true so it had no choice it printed this out if we change this back to 10 notice that this printed out because the first one was not true and it did not do anything with the else statement now it is worth pointing out that we can put this all on one line if we choose to do so. So we talked about the indention. However, if we put this on the same line as the if statement, we will not receive an error and it will test this. So we can run that. See, we don't get an error there. We can put this on the same line and it will run through it just like it did when we have our tabs. So now what happens if we want to test something two different things and see if two things are true. So we'll do, we're going to add another variable here. And this is going to bring in the AND logical operator. AND is a key word. We're going to use this in the if statement. So if x is greater than y, let's actually change that to less than y. So if it's less than y and x is equal to w, then we're going to print something out. If x is less than y, which it is, and 
x is equal to w, which it is, it should print this out. Now another logical operator that we have is OR. So if we change AND to OR, this is testing if x is less than y, which it is, or x is equal to w. So let's change that to greater than. So if x is greater than y, which is not, or x is equal to w, which it is, so one of these statements is true, it will print this out. All we need is one of these statements to be true in order for this to print out. So with the AND we have to have both true, with the OR we only have to have one true. So let's look up one more thing that we can do with IF statement. We can actually have what they call a nested IF statement. So it's two, it's an IF statement inside of an IF statement. So if X is less than Y, which is true, and then we add another if statement, if x is equal to w, then we print inside nested if. So this condition has to be true and this condition has to be true for us to print this out. If either one of these is not true, it will skip over this. So if this is true and this is not true, it'll step into the next line of this if statement. If this is not true, it will not even test for this. So that's if statements in a nutshell. If statements are very powerful and can be used in a lot of different ways and they're used all the time in programming.